Here are the easiest strategies to 3 star every town hall in Clash of Clans. The goal of this video is to show armies that just about anyone can pick up and learn right away. Being a casual player myself, it's very difficult to master strategies like Queen Charge, Blizzard, Lalo who knows what, so I compiled some of the best armies that can help you 3 star without breaking a sweat. So let's get right into it. Let's do this. Starting with Town Hall 2, ironically it's kind of a challenge at this stage since you only have 30 housing space, but you can make it work with 3 giants, 10 barbarians, and five archers. I highly advise if you're going to be staying at Town Hall 2 to get your clan castle. Because if your enemy has a clan castle troops, it's going to be a real pain in the ass to get that three star. But anyways, we're going to start by checking the clan castle. I'm going to drop some giants to distract the defenses and then split my barbs and archers to take care of those. If you manage to get all three defenses, good, but worst case scenario, you'll have to wait for archers to swoop in and get the rest. And now it's basically basically a waiting game and that's pretty much it. Hope you have patience because it's gonna take a while for those low level troops to 3 star this base. Moving on to Town Hall 3, we're gonna be using pretty much the same thing up to this point. This is kind of the best you got. 10 giants, 14 archers, and 3 wallbreakers. Start by checking the clan counts over troops, and if there are, surround them with your archers. Meanwhile, you wanna focus your attention on the mortar. If it's in the edge of the base, you're gonna to start to attack there. However, in this example, the mortar is in the center, so I just picked the side where my archers already were. I'm gonna send in a giant as a distraction for my wallbreaker, break that wall, and send in the rest of the giants. The giants should take care of the four defenses without an issue. They're more than capable of it. If you can, it would help to bring a clan castle with balloons or hog riders, as they'll both be very effective at helping the giants out. So the only thing left to do is wait for all your troops to clean up, and you're all set. At Town Hall 4, you finally unlock Balloons, the most powerful troop you have for a couple more Town Halls, so get used to it for a second. So we're going to be putting them to use, 12 loons, 18 archers, and 2 goblins. You don't need a clan castle, however it would be useful to bring some balloons in it. First, alert the clan castle, if it's empty that's good, but if not you'll be using your archers to take those out. Meanwhile, going to drop about 7 balloons on the air defense and split the remaining for the 2 archer towers. They will go in and do their work very slowly, but just be patient. Just gonna use a little bit of editing magic to speed it up. Once those three buildings go down, you can drop any cleanup troops you have. Just make sure not to put them in front of any ground defenses that are still up. After that, you're pretty much done. Just wait for all the troops to clean up and easy three star. At Town Hall 5, we're going to be using Mass Loons. Whether you have a clan castle or not, this is a very powerful army that can easily 3-star bases. The first step is luring the clan castle out with a couple archers. Ideally, you want to draw them out to where you can lightning the troops and some main defenses for this army, that is the wizard tower and air defense. Don't worry, if you miss a few troops, you aren't always going to get them all. Then we drop a couple giants to distract that wizard tower, drop several loons on the air defense, and wizard tower i did about eight each and then the rest to like an archer tower or whatever <laughs> the reason you're dropping so many is because you need to make sure that those defenses go down better safe than sorry if you're going to be bringing clan castle troops i recommend more balloons to help take those buildings out once those two are down you're basically good to go drop some cleanup troops and you're all done the balloons and cleanup troops should slowly but surely wipe the base clean Next up we have Town Hall 6 and we're going to be using a giant balloon army that requires no clan castle. However, if you're going to be doing a war attack, I highly recommend more balloons or a dragon. It's going to help a lot. You also want to make sure you have level 4 lightnings as it will allow you to destroy air defenses at this level, which is crucial for this strategy. So the very first thing is to lure the clan castle. Drop an archer near it and they pop out. If the clan castle is in the center, you can use a giant instead. Then lure it in a way to where you can lightning the troops and an air defense at the same time if that makes sense. So if I drop an archer here, the dragon should cross paths with the air defense. 
Sometimes it takes them out completely depending on what it is, but in this case it was a dragon, so I'm gonna lure it to the corner where I'm gonna surround it by archers and take it out. Meanwhile, you wanna take care of the second air defense. I'm gonna drop a couple giants and wall breakers to open this wall, drop some more giants, wizards, and that should be taken care of in a second. Once that's down, you wanna start dropping your balloons. If the air sweeper is still standing, you wanna make sure that you don't drop the balloons the way it's facing. Make sure to spread the balloons out and be patient. A good rule of thumb is at least two balloons for a building that shoots ground and three if it shoots air. However, in this case, I wasn't too concerned about that since there were only three buildings I needed to take care of. After that, you're pretty much set. Drop your goblins for cleanup, then claim your victory. At Town 7, you unlock dragons, and in my opinion, it's the best and easiest town hall to use them at. So, we're gonna bring a full army of them, just load it up, six lightnings and some balloons in the clan castle, which is optional, but does help. We're gonna start by looking at any defenses that are grouped up in the base that we can zap. Unfortunately, in this base, all the air defenses are spread out, which is a good example of what you'll probably run into, but no worries, I'm gonna take this air defense here, plus that air sweeper. If you can't get the air sweeper, avoid deploying the dragons right in front of them, maybe on the sides or behind it, but never head on. The dragons are way too slow for that. Now that those are out of the way, I drop my dragons in the side of the air defenses so I can take them out quickly, send in my clan castle to help them out faster, and my barb king will assist in taking out the enemy king. The rest of the battle is pretty much a race for time. This is as easy as it gets for Town Hall 7. I mean, it's only Town Hall 7, you shouldn't be struggling to 3 star other Town Hall 7s. An alternative army that I recommend to look up would be Hogs, as that's also just as easy and effective. For Town Hall 8, I'm gonna go with a classic Goho army. Golems and hogs with some troops and spells to assist with the enemy clan castle. Now, having a clan castle is optional, but it does help in making this army incredibly OP. So if you're doing a war attack, maybe have a clan castle. I recommend boulders and an extra poison. So the plan is to take a portion of the base out, ideally the side with a clan castle since that's really the only issue you need to worry about. So let's start with the golem, clan castle, king, and a poison for the enemy clan castle, or you can save it for later if you don't need it. My troops did split up, but it's no big deal. This strategy is basically foolproof and anything going wrong is not really that big of a deal. Unless your hogs turn into bacon, that's a different story. <laughs> I'm gonna rage my king and start getting ready to drop my hogs. I decided I wanted to go from the bottom left so that the hogs can go in a U shape around the base. It's not always gonna go as smoothly as I explain it, but that's just what you wanna aim for. Okay, hogs down and now oh, you gotta do is make sure you heal them and that's pretty much it. You're cruising through the rest of it. You can put your phone down and just watch. Now, if you're wondering, the extra poison is in case there's any untriggered skeleton traps that follow your hogs. You can also use it to slow down the king, but like I said, you don't exactly need the clan castle and you'll do just fine without it. To wrap this one up, the best advice I can give is to do some of the planning in your head before the timer starts. You definitely don't wanna run out of time because you were just sitting there thinking of where to deploy the hogs. You wanna do all that planning before. You can also remove a hog rider and and bring some more cleanup troops if that helps. Town Hall 9, you have so many options. The easiest is probably zap dragons. However, I'm sure no one is dying to learn how to spam dragons. We already showed you the Town Hall 7 version of that and it's kind of the same thing. So I went with Zap Lalo. Zap spells, Lava Hound, and some loons. In your clan castle, preferably a Lava Hound and an extra poison for good measure, but unless you're doing a clan war attack, I wouldn't sweat it. You just want to make sure that your zap is at least level 5. So first, with your zaps, best case scenario, you can snag the clan castle, queen, and an air defense all in one go, but it's not always going to be that easy. And sometimes you got to figure out another way to take care of all of that. So I'm going to be taking this queen, air defense, wizard tower, and cannon with my zaps. Always look for opportunities 
opportunities like this. You want to take care of the heavy hitters. Clan castle, queen, air defenses, all that. Then I'm going to drop my heroes on the left side. The goal was to lure the clan castle and take them out. The poison also helps if you need it. And if you can, try and plant it to where you can also get another air defense. But even if we just got the clan castle with the heroes, we would still be okay since we have four lava hounds. Once all that was taken care of, in go two lava hounds, one for each air defense, followed by some balloons, ideally on arch towers, wizard towers, or anything that can shoot air. If you still have a poison, that also helps to eliminate those air skellies. I'm gonna send in my third lava hound and a couple loons at the bottom. Same thing on the top right side. In this scenario, I was going more for a C shape, but sometimes you wanna go for a U. Don't forget to also heal your balloons when they're in the center or taking a lot of damage. Things can get pretty heated in the center of the base. You also have a hay spell to use however you want. I use it to get rid of that annoying air sweeper. <laughs> After that, you're pretty much set. Drop some cleanup troops and let them wipe the base. It's pretty simple, especially on those bases that have way too many defenses clumped up together. It becomes even easier. My easy to learn pick for Town Hall 10 has to be Gobo Witch. Golems, bowlers, and witches. But don't worry if you just got to Town Hall 10 and you don't have the bowlers, you only need to have them in your clan castle for this composition. Preferably in a siege machine like the Wall Wrecker or even better, a Log Launcher. The first step, like always, is to figure out where you're going to attack from. What you're going for is kind of splitting the base in three lanes, so imagine that. One golem in each lane spread out, and the middle will be your main lane. For this example, I decided to go from the left, as I can split my golems evenly, while also getting this Inferno Tower with my Log Launcher. If you can get an Inferno Tower down, try and do it. At this stage of the game, the Inferno Towers are the beefiest defense out there. Okay, so golems and siege machines went down, 12 witches spread out evenly. Once that wall is open, I send in my third golem, king and queen. They're gonna take care of that defensive king, and meanwhile, you don't wanna forget about the clan castle troops, that is what the poison and freeze is for. I kind of dropped my freeze a little too early, but luckily it wasn't that big of a deal. The witches eventually got the dragon. No problem. Anyways, when the siege machine gets destroyed or you destroy it manually, you want to drop your heal and rage on those bowlers. They will absolutely shred buildings. As for the jump spell, it's really up to you where you want to put it. I didn't want those expos to become a problem, so I put it right in the middle of those compartments. After this, just watch your hero abilities, wait for a good time to drop that second heal and rage on those bowlers, and that's basically it. The majority of the work is at the beginning of the attack, and then you're cruising through it. This one was pretty fun, but most importantly, easy to get the hang of. Ice Bow Witch Bats. I don't even know if that's what it's called, but it's basically Bow Witch with Ice Golems and Bat Spells. It's pretty similar to the last strategy we looked at, except there's one major difference in the planning here. You're not splitting your army into lanes. The goal is to get them all inside the base at once. So I decided to go from the top right side because if I drop my Log Launcher here, I can break all of these walls and go for the Eagle Artillery and Town Hall. And in this case, the single Inferno Towers are no match for this army since it's super spammy. If they were in multi, I'd suggest trying to find a side where you can take those out quickly. So we're going to start by using our Electro Dragon and King to create the funnel by taking out these surrounding buildings. You can also use these extra troops here, the balloon, the archer, the wizard, or you can wait to use them later for cleanup, whatever works. Once I had a good enough funnel, I dropped my Log Launcher, Ice Golems, Bowlers, and Witches. The Log Launcher usually doesn't get dropped first, that's usually the Ice Golems instead. But since my funnel was a little wonky, I wanted to break those walls first before my heroes went in, so then I'd make sure that they actually went inside the base. Everything's looking good, most troops funneled in properly. Make sure to use those rage spells and warders ability when you need them. I also do have more bowlers in the clan castle, which aid in clearing the center pretty quickly, especially under a rage spell. And now more than half the base is gone and tons of troops are still putting in that work. 
I thought it was a great time to drop the bat spell to help clean up. Ideally, you want them to stick together, so place them accordingly. And the remaining free spells will be used to freeze any wizard towers left because they basically melt the bats. So make sure no wizard towers are touching the bats. Also, multi inferno towers. You can always use those free spells on those multis. Do whatever you gotta do to keep those bats alive for the rest of the match. Besides the multi and wizard tower though, other defenses are really no problem for the bats. But yeah, with the amount of troops I had left, it was a guaranteed three star anyways. Overall, it's a super simple strategy. You just gotta make sure you funnel into the base and when enough damage is done, drop your bat spells and protect them with the free spell. Of course, it's easier said than done. Make sure you're practicing all these attacks before you jump into a war attack. At tunnel 12, we're gonna be going with Zap Quake Witch. An army composed of golems, a lot of witches, and a zap quake combo. It is very crucial that these two spells are maxed for your current town hall. If not, the strategy will not work quite the same. In the clan castle, you'll want to bring a kill squad with a rage inside a wall wrecker or log launcher. So jumping right into our example, you'll want to take some of these infernos out with your spells, starting with this multi, four lightnings, and an earthquake, and even better if you can weaken buildings next to it. Ideally, with this army, you want to take care of the multis as those are very effective against these witches. However, I saw an opportunity by taking this single instead. I can destroy that plus weaken the eagle artillery, expo, and that bomb tower. And then the last multi left, since I'm going from the bottom right, I plan to take that out with my log launcher. All right, so everything's set in stone. Let's start by dropping golems, log launcher, witches. This baby dragon is supposed to help funnels, so I dropped it on the bottom left. However, depending on the base, you might not even need it, and you can use it later for cleanup. Once I have a clear path, in goes my heroes, and the log launcher drops my kill squad. Make sure you drop your poison on the enemy's clan castle troops. Don't forget about that. All right, so now that we're close to the town hall, I'm gonna drop that rage and activate the warden's ability to help clear that up quickly. And as you can see, that is why I bought a nice golem. Freezed up a nice portion of the base there and my troops just walk right in. Okay, and now all we have left is our king and queen's ability. With this many troops left, a three star was only a matter of time, so you wanna use those abilities however you see fit. I ended up using my kings just to speed them up because I was worried about the time. <laughs> this was a really fun strategy. My best advice is to scout the base first, plan on which infernos you're gonna take out, and what side is most convenient to go from. Next up is Town Hall 13, and we're bringing with us a spammy Yeti, Super Wizard, and Bat Army. You want to make sure you bring a Log Launcher with more Yetis and a Rage. A Wall Wrecker can also work, but Log Launcher is better at doing damage deep into the base, so that's the reason why we're using it so much. So, the goal of his army is to create a simple funnel and spam. Well, obviously there's a little more than spamming, so let's just jump right into it. We're gonna pick a side to attack from. I chose the left because I can get some insane value with my log launcher through the middle here. Then a Yeti and two super wizards on each side to funnel. And once those side buildings are gone, drop your ice golem, super wall breaker, Yetis, the rest of your wizards, basically everything you got. Except for cleanup troops and your royal champion, you wanna save that for later. So just let your troops do the work, use your hero abilities when needed. I usually use my warden right when the troops enter the base for the first time. That's when they start separating, you know? Wanna catch them before they leave. <laughs> and also make sure to place that rage on the siege machines once it deploys your yetis. Meanwhile, drop your champion and get ready for your bat spells. You wanna make sure there's not too many multis or wizard towers still up. You do have free spells, but a good rule of thumb is to let your troops take care of most of them. Finally, when my champion takes out the second to last wizard tower, I'm gonna send in my bats, freezing any splash damage buildings and that town hall when necessary. The rest of the match is basically clean up and the only thing that can go wrong is running out of time. <laughs> The best advice I can give for this army is time your world champion and bat spells correctly. If all your bats die from a wizard tower and you don't have any cleanup troops left, well, you're in for a rude awakening. But don't worry, it's super simple. For Town Hall 14, I'm going to be going with an army composed of a lot of ice golems, witches, bat spells, and in a log launcher, I'm bringing two yetis, poison, and a rage. If you've seen some of the previous armies in this video, you know exactly what we're about to do. <laughs> That's right, 
Spam! Set them all in! Hey, if it works, it works, right? So for our example, I chose to start from the top left. This way I can aim to get the Eagle Artillery, Infernos, and break my way into the base. The very first thing we're gonna do is put a nice golem and two witches on each side to create my funnel. Then in go the rest of the ice golems, Super Wallbreakers, Titan, Log Launcher, Witches, Heroes. Yeah, you're putting it all down except for your cleanup troops. You wanna save those. Once the enemy clan castle pops out, make sure to drop your poison on them and activate the warden's ability if you haven't already. You want to help your troops as much as possible here to stay alive because we're barely inside the base, so you don't want them dying right now. Then once my troops get to the middle, I'm going to drop my rage. I probably could have waited a little longer, but it turned out all right. The real magic of this army is all of those ice golems. Once they die, they freeze massive sections of the base, taking some of the heat off the rest of the troops. And since you have so many ice golems, this is constantly happening during the battle. That's why it works so well, regardless of all you did was just drop all your troops. Feel free to also use a free spell, but I recommend to save as many as possible because you'll need them for the bat spells. Speaking of bat spells, pay attention to how many splash buildings are left. Ideally, before dropping the spells, you want to let your troops take care of as many multi-infernos, wizard towers, and scatter shots as possible. Don't wait too long to drop them though, any remaining splash buildings you will be freezing. So in go my bats, use your freeze as necessary. Funny enough, after all that explaining, I actually butchered my free spells. Most of my bats died, but it's okay. I wasn't too concerned because I had a lot of troops to clean up the base, so yeah, no big deal. The rest of the match is waiting for everything to be destroyed. The best advice I can give for this army is timing your spells correctly, especially your bat and freeze. Once you get the hang of it, you've basically mastered the spam. <laughs> And finally, at Town Hall 15, we're going to be going with Ice Golem, Yetis, Super Wizards, and 8 Earthquakes. Now, fair warning, it is pretty difficult to 3-star a Town Hall 15. However, compared to other hard-to-learn armies that can 3-star, this is by far the easiest that I've found. So, with your 8 Earthquakes, you want to open up the base. Luckily, this base was already kind of open, but I chose two spots where it could help. Then, you want to make sure you get a funnel going. I'm going to drop an Ice Golem and a Super Wizard on each side, but feel free to drop more troops depending on the base and how many outside buildings there are. I'm going to send in my Super Wallbreaker where I'm going to deploy my troops. Then, Ice Golem, Yetis, the rest of the Wizards, King, Queen, Warden, and the Apprentice Warden. You can drop the Royal Champion as well, however, I like to save her for cleanup because you never know if you're gonna need her later and then you don't have her. Poison on enemy clan castle troops. You want to use your Warden's ability early in the attack. In this case, I used it when the enemy clan castle came out. And then use your Rage, preferably in the middle of the base or wherever the most action is occurring. It's usually the middle since that's where all the important buildings are that you want to take care of, usually. Gonna freeze some defenses there, and finally, it looks like the majority of the problematic defenses are gone. So, at last, in goes the Royal Champion to assist with the cleaning out of the rest of the base. Now's a good time to also drop any cleanup troops if you have any. While that goes on, I did want to mention that I am not a Town Hall 15 in my personal accounts, so I don't know much about the more complicated armies at this stage. This army is supposed to be super easy to learn, super casual, and I just want to give a shout out to Sir Moose, which is where I found this army. Anyways, easy 3 star in this base. Feel free to swap out some troops for more cleanup troops. I know that can be an issue sometimes, but that's why I saved my Royal Champion. So guys, that is pretty much a strategy for every town hall in the game. I really hope I was able to help someone out there. Like I said, I'm more of a casual player and I just don't want to learn the more complicated armies. They, they're too complicated. I've tried them before and they're just not my cup of tea. So I hope I can at least help one or two people out there. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, have a give me out. Peace.